Hello, my name is Susan Winkelstein and I'm a funeral director with Chicago Jewish Funerals. About ready to begin the services for Dr. Susan London. Officiating will be Cantor Howard Friedland. Good morning to, to everyone uh, from near and far who is, is watching. Uh, today I will first invite uh, Karen and David to please stand as we uh, tear the ribbon. Kriya is an ancient ceremony. Uh, our tradition teaches that when our ancestor Jacob heard of the supposed death of his son Joseph, he was so overcome with grief that he tore his clothing. And we do it today as a sign of our grief. Uh, we wear the ribbon for for the seven days of Shiva, of mourning. Some wear it for 30 days of Shloshim, the, the first month of the mourning period. And some wear it longer. It's just an, an outward sign to anyone who comes in contact with you that, uh, that your heart's broken and it's a tear. And uh, we hope in time, uh, in the coming weeks and months, and of course the first year, that it will it will mend. Um, so I ask you to, to tear it now. It's a sign of that grief. And we say these words, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam dayan ha-emet Basra, you eternal our God, sovereign of all worlds, who is the righteous judge. Adonai natan, Adonai lakach, hishen Adonai nevorach. God has given, God has taken away, blessed be God's name. And it may seem counterintuitive to say these words when you are grieving uh, your mother so deeply. Uh, but we say them acknowledging that uh, life does not exist without contrasts. And in having the good uh, that was Susan's life, we, we also take the, the bitter of her departure. So we've come together as family and community to express our sacred sorrow. We've come together to draw strength from one another and from the ultimate source of all strength. We've come together to affirm comfort and blessing in the face of deepest loss. We have come together to bid farewell to Dr. Susan London. We share a common prayer that the source of healing sustain those of you who grieve. May those wounded with loss be blessed with love and compassion. We pray that the journey that lies ahead lead from darkness to light, as it is written. Thus says the source of hope, I will respond to your yearning. When you call out to me in the night, I will answer. I will be with you even in the darkest of places. I will give you strength. I will nourish you. And you shall know protection beneath the shelter of my wings. And I extend condolences on behalf of everyone to Karen and David and, and to all who knew and loved Susan. Grief knows no, no bounds of, uh, of blood when it comes to, to missing uh, someone who you loved very much. And so we pray for wholeness and compassion in the days to head, days ahead and let us say, Amen. The 23rd Psalm. Adonai rohi lohaksar Inot dashe yarbitseni Shulchan neged tzorerai 
Mishon Tova Shemen Roshi Kosi Revayom Ahok Tov Ahok Tov Achesed Yedefuni Kol Yeme Chayai Vishabti Bevet Adonai Leorech Yamin Adonai Rohi Lohetso Adonai Rohi Lohetso Let's read together the English translation found in the inside of your pamphlet. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of God forever. My eyes look into the void. From where will my help come? My help comes from my very source, the fashioner of order and of harmony. Your guardian will catch you when you slip. Your shelter will protect you while you sleep. Your night will not last forever, for your protector will surely bring back the sun in the morning. Your source will watch over you at all times. And as you came into this world swaddled in loving embrace, so shall you leave. And finally, this reading from Rabbi Alvin Fine. Birth is a beginning and death a destination, and life is a journey from childhood to maturity and youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion and then perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength or strength to weakness and often back again, from health to sickness and back we pray to health again. From offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion and grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat, until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death is a destination, but life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage. The Torah is the sacred book of the Jewish people. And it is some parts history, some parts myth, some parts legend, uh, but it is read worldwide in the words uh, that were handed down. No one has ever added or subtracted those words in the scroll. And each of us, as we live our lives, writes our own Torah scroll. And it seems to me the brilliance of Torah is that it displays human beings as human, with their strengths and weaknesses and their frailties, trying to do the best they can. And uh, at the end of our lives, uh, each of us, I think, has something to say to the world and has uh, something to show on how to live. So we'll hear from people who, who knew Dr. Susan London intimately today. And first I call upon her daughter, Karen. Uh, so, started yesterday try pulling together all these memories and all these amazing things with her. And I realized I am not ready today. So I just wanted to say how much 
just making me smile just starting to move through that and to try to pull something together. Um, and then I love her very, very much. And I really, <laughs> I'm so glad that, so, that other people love her too. Thank you, Karen. Next, we'll hear from Susan's son, David. I love you very much, Mom. And I tried to write some words for a eulogy. So here goes. My mother did not have an entirely easy life, especially at the end. I don't know a lot about my mom's last years because we were not in touch. It hadn't been for a long time. I do remember a lot of good memories when I was younger. They are rushing back now and I cherish them. Much of what is good in me comes from her. When I was a child, back then I had a toy construction site with a truck, plastic pipes to assemble, tools, and plastic people to use them. My mom played with me, played with it with me right when they were new. She had in advance set them up in a construction scene already in progress. I can remember the look and feel of the tile in the basement and imagining the construction crew was tearing it up to install new or replacement pipe under the pretend road. It was a fun set of toys and it was fun to pretend with her. She had set up the flag people, the crew members who direct traffic with one arm up and one arm out. They only bent at the shoulders and hips. For what seemed like years, whenever I played with them, I posed them like that too. One arm up and one arm out, directing traffic, focused on directing that traffic as much as their plastic bodies would allow. Eventually I realized they could stand differently and even swapped which toy people did what jobs and such who wore what ha hat or helmet, which plastic people got the reflective vest. But her impulse had been so simple and made sense. There had been a reason, there had been little reason to change it a lot. One arm up and one arm out. I played with them like that a lot of the time. I've been lucky to entertain a lot of people playing pretend. And she had a hand at that. And I hope she still will. for her and for us. I don't yet know how to grieve her best. My mom had some words dear to her posted on her refrigerator, nightstand, and other places. I offer them now as a sincere wish. Um, may you forever be filled with loving kindness. May you forever be well. May you always be peaceful and at ease. May you for all eternity be happy. Mom, I love you. Mom, I miss you. Now I always will. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, David. Now we'll hear uh, remotely from Susan's friend, Sharon. Susan has been Susan a long been time a long close time friend close. for 44 years. We have laughed together, cried together, volunteered on projects together, exchanged stock tips and insurance advice, lunch together, shopped together, and she was good at that. She was also very good at collecting chocolate. Her whole kitchen counter was covered with all kinds of candy, but it had to be rich, creamy, quality chocolate. On the way to her house, I would start salivating, knowing that I could pick my favorites when I got there. One of her favorites was Marshall Fields Frango Mints. 
She was a great cook when she had time. And frango mint pie was one of her specialties. To this day, they are my favorite chocolate treat also. I first met Susan on the advice of Welcome Wagon. I had called them to find out the names and phone numbers of women who had just moved into Highland Park. I called to solicit her to join a new chapter of Women's American Art, Brittany chapter, which I was forming. No, she said, I'm not interested. I'm not into women's groups. We continued to talk and found out that she was a CPR instructor and I asked her to come teach our class to our new ORT members. She specialized in CPR um, uh, and safety advice for young children. And I still remember one of the tips she gave me. Don't feed your children marshmallows because if they choke, the marshmallow will swell in their air pipe. That was the beginning of our friendship and she did become an involved ORT member. Susan was very smart, Mensa, she told me, a great researcher. And I remember when David was sick, she spent hours and hours with phone calls and researching a cure for him. He was her very special little boy and she wasn't going to let anything happen to him. If I were sick, I would want her on my team. She would be the first one I call so she could find a cure for me. Susan loved both her children to her depths, talked about their successes to me and showed off their pictures and articles. David with his very handsome headshots and plays, Karen too with her acting. Susan was always ready to hop a plane to see them perform. She was so proud. I remember how elated and sad she was when Karen got the job in the FBI. Her little girl was literally flying away. Amazingly, the FBI even came to Florida to interview me as to the background of Karen to make sure she was a worthy candidate for them. I guess she was because she worked there for 11 years. Susan was not a practicing Jew, but knew her heritage and it was important to her. She was a Shoah Foundation interviewer for the Steven Spielberg project of having Holocaust survivors and witnesses from 56 countries record their stories so they would not be lost. She was a vital part of 52,000 audio visual meetings. She became very close to her subjects and got very emotional when she shared their stories with me. Years later, she was still in contact with some of them. Susan was a real leader and very articulate. One of my favorite projects that we did together was selling $1,000 full page ads in an advertising magazine that was a fundraiser for ORT. It was a, it was a lot of money in the late 70s who was going to spend that money? Well, there was Jaguar, jewelry and liquor stores, and the new water tower, and the Magnificent Mile, to name a few. Hold on. I'm on a funeral. Bye. Um, we planned our strategy. We dressed up in furs and jewelry and put up our makeup, put on our makeup and high heels and went out to do our calls. We had to look like fancy ladies. We had to look the part like we travel in those circles. I didn't, but Susan did, and loaned me a fur coat and diamond jewelry so I would be it dressed to impress also. We were in our early 30s and we were able to fill the book, the book with luxury product ads. What fun we had together working on this project. Unfortunately, I had to give the fur and diamonds back when the project was over. Susan was creative and crafty. She made all kinds of things. Her jewelry was amazing. She made a special doll for me when I was very depressed. I was involved in a car accident where the other person died 
it was hard to face each day. The doll came, um, the doll came with inspiring amulets, which was defined as objects that protect a person from trouble. They were really decorative badges. I would sit in front of the doll, talk to her and cry. Soon with the help of her doll, I was cheering up and put positive amulets on her and was having better days. She made the doll with curly hair like me. Susan did her therapy without even being here with me. Susan was driven. I remember her studying so hard to get her master's in psychology and then going on for her doctorate. It was a difficult time being a single parent going through a divorce, but her determination got her to her goal. And in her years in practice, she helped so many people cope and saved many lives of desperate people dealing with abuse, her specialty. One more thing, hold on. I had a habit of leaving things behind when I'd visit her. I left behind my yellow sweater and a box of china that I had stored there since 1985 because I had no room to put it in my new apartment in Florida. Susan, if you are up there with my yellow sweater and box of china, please send it back. Susan, my dear friend, I wish I had been there for you more as you became more sickly. I am sorry that I wasn't. Please forgive me, but know that you were and are loved and I will treasure our friendship and its memories forever. We had wonderful, happy times. I will see you again someday and I will bring the chocolate. May you rest in peace. I love you. Thank you very much, Sharon. And finally, we'll hear from Susan's dear friend, Lydia. My name is Lydia Marta Logu. I was honored to work for Dr. Susan London for the last five years, part-time. In the beginning, she told me to call her Dr. Susan. After about two years, she said to call her Susan. Three years ago, she became ill and she was in many hospitals in Illinois and other states. She called me to bring staff in the hospital or send her in Minnesota Mayo Clinic. She introduced me as a friend to all staff in the hospital. Before coronavirus, I was able to go inside her room and I could spend time with her. We were so happy to see each other. Last hospital in Lutheran and Park Ridge, I brought beautiful flowers for her birthday and chicken soup. The next day she called me and left a beautiful thank you message. For the last three weeks, I visit her two times a week with the chicken soup. Last visit was August 24, when she had the last soup. I promised her I will visit next Wednesday. Tuesday morning, I received a call from the hospital with the sad news. Susan passed away. I will miss her and always she has a place in my heart. God bless you, all of you. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you all for your words. Uh, I met with uh, Karen over the phone just a couple of days ago, and the interesting thing about the work that I do is that sometimes you don't even know someone, and you get a description of them. And over a few minutes' time, half hour or so, you, you feel like you know them, in a way. Um, I first have to make mention that these flowers are beautiful and so colorful and very fitting for someone who was described to me as, as so artistic. 
that uh, was mentioned by Sharon, the jewelry, and also that Susan worked in stained glass and she made the three-dimensional pictures. Uh, she was an actress. She was a dancer. She danced in the New York City uh, ballet production of The Nutcracker when it was here in Chicago. Uh, had grown up in Glenview and Highland Park, attended New Trier High School, did her undergraduate studies at Indiana University, and then uh, received her, her master's and in, in doctorate later on in life at the uh, Chicago School of Professional Psychology. Um, it was said that 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 Susan was not a, a religious Jew. But it's interesting to note that she was involved in, in Jewish organizations, to be sure. ORT was a love of hers. Uh, ORT is an a international organization, uh, really founded in the, in the 1880s by Russian Jews, uh, when Jews uh, at that time were uh, uh, demanded by the government to live in the Pale of Settlement. And it was really to, to start education, uh, to learn uh, both skilled and, and unskilled labor, but certainly skilled labor, uh, things like farming, carpentry, cabinet making, uh, all the way to, uh, to, to engineering. It, it exists still today, and, and, uh, and Susan was a, a big part of uh, Ort Jewish Women. Uh, it was interesting to me that uh, Karen said Susan once uh, headed a, a national a foundation fundraiser, and the fundraiser was selling shrimp. It was very, <laughs> it was, it's been so great to me. I'd never heard of that, but it must have worked, because who doesn't love shrimp? Uh, she loved movies. She loved Gone with the Wind. It was probably her favorite movie. She loved all World War II movies. She loved going to Disney World, went every year, as I was told. Um, she was a great mom. Uh, a lot of the best things in me are from her. Karen said, and David said that he said that as well today. Um, it is interesting that this is the month of Elul, and it's fitting that that we should lay Susan to rest now. Elul, the acronym of which the letters are Aleph, Lamed, Vav, Lamed in Hebrew, uh, spell the words Ani le dodi, le dodi li. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. They're words from the Song of Songs. Uh, Elul is a month before Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the High Holy Days, when we uh, we examine our lives and examine how we have been hurt and how we have hurt other people, and we seek forgiveness, forgiving ourselves, knowing that we are human. As I said before, as in Torah, we do the best we can without a guidebook, right? Uh, and also examining and and, and forgiving others and let and let others forgive us. And Dr. Susan London devoted her whole professional life to helping people who were hurt heal. Uh, her practice dealt with adult survivors of, of trauma and abuse. So she knew that though the road may not be easy, even those severely traumatized and hurt maybe many years in the past could with work and compassion find healing. And I believe that's a great legacy she leaves to all of you and leaves to the world. What a great legacy anyone, from which anyone can learn. So what do we do to honor Susan's life? It's enough that we should come here and memorialize her today, uh, but how do we leave here uh, being better people and better in the world? Well. The one thing we can eat some frango mints, make a frango pie. We can bring art and beauty to people who we know and people who we do not know. We can love someone. And those are the things to do and to take away. And I would just finish by saying that, that Susan died way too soon. She's 72 years old. That's a young person today, fairly young person. Though she lived a very, very full life. And, uh, and we all leave with some regrets. None of our relationships are perfect. But if you learn to love and love another person, well, that's success. And I'm glad that, that both of you had that, along with, with many, obviously many friends who are here and and friends who are listening from other places. So Susan, may you rest in peace. 
May your memory always be for a blessing to those you knew and loved here on earth. Amen. I'll ask you now to please stand for Amal Rachamim, the memorial prayer. El malerachamim shachen b'amramim Ametzeim enochan nechonat achat chanfe hashchina Bemalot kidoshim otehorim Kizor harakiyya mazhirim Et nishmat Dr. Susan London Shehalcha leolama Anabalacharim <laughs> Al Amen. God filled with compassion, whose loving presence ever surrounds us, bring final rest to the soul of Dr. Susan London, who has returned to her source. May the memory of her life shine forth like the brilliance of the skies above, as it brightens our own lives even now. May you, who are the source of all compassion, shelter her beneath the protection of your wings and bind her soul among the living. She may rest in peace and let us say, Amen. Amen. And I'll now ask uh, the mourners to recite with me the mourners, uh, Kaddish, the mourners prayer. It mentions nothing of death. It's uh, in it we find words like Chaim, life, and Shalom, peace. Yitkadal, yitkadash, shemei rabba, elma divra chigutei deemlich malchutei, בחיי חון וביומי חון וחיי דכל בית ישראל בעגלה ובזמן קריב אמרו אמן יהי שמי רבה מברך לעולם על עמי אלמיה יתברך וישתבח ויתבער ותרומם ויתנשא יתהדר ויתעלה ויתהלה ושמי דקודשה בריחו לאלה ננקול ברכתה ושירתה תושפחתה ונחמתה דנירן מעלמה ואמרו אמן יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיה, וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל במרום אמן. עושה השלום במרומה, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ועל כל יושבי תבל במרום אמן. May the one who makes peace make peace for us and for all Israel and for all who dwell on earth and we say Amen. Please be seated. I also at this time would like to make mention to those of you who are uh, viewing uh, from other places to please go to Chicago Jewish Funerals website and uh, fill, uh, sign the, the guest book that was created for Dr. Susan London.
It is traditional to bury our loved ones with the earth from the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem, so I'll witness him now. So the, the family will be placing flowers uh, in the grave now. And please go ahead. And the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, after which uh, everyone will be invited to participate in burial. It is customary to 
shovel three, shovel falls of earth. Well, three is a number of intention. So that we know that when you place it, it is not a mistake. It is intentional. And it's one of the kindest acts you can perform because it's one which, of course, uh, cannot be repaid by the recipient. We do it out of love. Um, try and invite you. Come forward. We'll have David place flower. Orange. <laughs> and now I invite you to come to either side and shovel three, shovel four of the recite these words. We speak these words to all who are mourning. May God console you with all who mourn in Zion and Jerusalem. And now we go forth in peace to life. This concludes this funeral service. Thank you.